What's up? If you've recently been using a bootcamp Mac laptop or Mac device, you might have had the problem of having X amount of files in your Mac partition and X amount of files in your Windows partition. And sometimes you need to access one or the other when you're in the other partition. And this can be quite a frustrating thing. And one of the biggest problems we have here is the fact that we don't want to double up memory. So we don't want to have, say, the same one gig video file in our Windows partition and in our Mac partition, because then we're taking up two gigs of hard drive space for one file. So what are the ways we can get around this? There are two ways you could feasibly get around this problem. I'm going to show you both of these today. Our first option is a hardware option. This would involve using a high-speed SSD that we then format to a Mac and Windows compatible drive. So that would mean either using MS-DOS FAT32 or XFAT. To avoid any problems with larger files, it would make most sense to use XFAT in this scenario. While for this video I'm not going to format this drive as this is full of very precious video files, I will be using this USB drive to demonstrate this process. First thing I'm going to do is log out of Windows and log back into Mac OS. Now that we are in our Mac OS device, we're going to insert our USB. I can then see this bootcamp drive has come up. I'm going to go to Disk Utility via Spotlight Search. And there I'm going to click on Bootcamp, hit Erase, and go to XFAT. I'm going to name this drive Shareable just because this is now going to be our shareable set of data. I'm going to hit Erase. That's it, that is now formatted as XFAT and we've got 30 gigs of space in order to share different files that we might need. I'm just gonna grab an image file from a shoot we did recently in Leeds and then go into our shareable drive and paste that there. After that, I'm going to eject the shareable drive and then remove the USB and shut down Mac OS and boot back into Windows 10. Okay, so now booting back into Windows 10. So now once we are in Windows 10, we can then use this USB. Again, if we were to do this in a way that we wanted to do it long term, I would suggest using something like a high speed SSD. This is the sort of thing that I typically edit videos from and it's always lightning fast. So if you wanted to use that as essentially a storage expansion to use between your Mac and your Windows, this is definitely a good way to go. That way you could save your hard drive space for using bootable applications and various things like that, and you're not wasting it on media storage. We're then gonna install our USB, and there we have it. Our image file is there working seamlessly. Personally, I would say this is probably the easiest and most cost-effective way as it's a one-time purchase for your drive. The only thing you'll have to make sure that you do is that you back up your drive because you would back up the contents of your computer. You'll make sure that everything's backed up that you would be sharing between the two operating systems. If it were me doing this, I would actually not store anything on my hard drive whatsoever, apart from maybe a little bit of cloud storage. And then I would have everything that I use on a daily basis stored on that drive and a duplicate of that drive. And then I would use that between Mac OS and Windows 10 so that I just had a nice flow going between both operating systems. Now, the second process of being able to do this is a little bit of a different approach. This is going to be using software. The software we're going to need to use is any form of cloud sharing software. In my case, I use Dropbox. I've been using Dropbox for four years, I think. On Dropbox, I have two terabytes of storage that I have synced to my Mac OS partition on this MacBook Pro, as well as on my custom built PC. To demonstrate how this would look in practice, I'm showing you right now the display of my Mac with Dropbox installed on it and my Windows PC with Dropbox installed on it. This is how I share all of my files that I might need for different projects, for creating YouTube videos, for just organizing life in general. And I have these files also synced to an Android tablet and to an iPhone. So it's very cross-platform, cross-manufacturer, and it gives you a lot of freedom. There are some software problems with Dropbox, like some things that just don't make sense. So right now, if I'm on the Windows partition, I go into Dropbox, essentially all of my files that I will ever use live in Dropbox. My downloads don't really hold anything, my user files don't really hold anything. So it's purely Dropbox that holds all this sort of stuff. So let's just say right now I'm gonna to go to create a new folder within the Windows section of Dropbox. I'm just gonna call this shareable. That file is now created. And then on our Mac partition of Dropbox, we can go down and that shareable file has already appeared. 
And then if I wanted to have it downloaded, I would then just go to Smart Sync, hit local, or I could just leave it in the cloud online. Obviously, this is just explaining how cloud storage works. Often, I think individuals can overlook cloud storage as a benefit, but when you are using it between different devices from different manufacturers, running different operating systems, it's kind of hard to beat in terms of making your life a bit easier and not having to send yourself things in emails. Everything just auto syncs up all the time and then you can just grab it from whichever device you are on. That is it from me today, guys. I hope you have found this video helpful. And if you have any questions about running this sort of system, be it the SSD version using hardware or be it the Dropbox system using software, drop any questions you might have down below. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I'm out.